Tech, and joining me is Mark Farley, blogger extraordinaire, social media from HP. Mark, thanks for joining us. Say what? Hey now, Mark. So, <laughs> I uh, know I was supposed to say hey now, but... Uh, I, 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 it, it, it's your tagline, Mark. So, 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 so Mark, um, we were just talking about innovation with, with Prith and HP Labs, and uh, you, you've worked for a couple of the you know, innovative startups here in the storage industry. I was wondering if we can start this off with a little discussion about what you see as innovation in the storage industry of the startups and the big companies and how those things play together. Well, I think the, I think the big area we're in a, where innovation comes along is in areas of integration. You know, uh, I think most of the technology that comes to storage has been invented somewhere else already. Right, and then storage just figures out how to apply it. And it's true for, for many different things. But, uh, so I think where a lot of the innovations going in small companies today is trying to figure out cloud interfaces and, and those types of things. At HP, the innovation is about taking bits of servers and networking and integrating it together with storage. So the innovation we've got there is taking existing pieces and trying to fold it together. And I think that's what, you know, you're, you're seeing that across the board with virtualization, for instance, you know, integration of VMware, of Citrix, you know, of these different things. And the, that's, that is the wheel that drives this industry, I think. It's yeah, so, so, so when, I, when I look, I, I think back, you know, iSCSI was really driven by some of the small companies like one you used to work for. Uh, thin provisioning was done by 3PAR, which brought you into HP, and uh, really helping the, the big companies either, either buy or follow that, that, that uh, technology and then integrate it into their solutions. Can, can you maybe give us a little colors, you know, what have you seen from, from a technology integration standpoint as 3PAR has moved into HP? Well, you know, it's interesting. The I, I can't pre-announce things, but you know, the question came up today: Are we integrating ProLiant server technology? We, you know, the 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 words we're using, the words we're using, we're taking ProLiant DNA for converged storage, and so the question comes up: Well, how much of that ProLiant DNA is getting into three par systems? Uh, and the answer is we haven't announced anything there yet. Right. You know, yeah, so, uh, so, so I mean, you know, chipsets are very common and kind of shared components. Uh, when, when you look at what you know, matrix and cloud systems and virtual systems and app systems, uh, the, I think you know, HP is really blurring that line between the, the, the compute and the storage and even the network some. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I see going on, and uh, they're they're really looking at combining different components and trying to figure out what is the what is the right amount of this and the right amount of that to make a solution. But beyond that, because, because there's so much that's steeped in, in blade server technology, you've got a little more granular approach than what I think you have if you've got uh, you know, rack servers, box servers, that kind of thing. You know? so, so the idea is that if somebody buys a solution, they don't, they don't buy a box as a solution, they may buy some blades of this, some blades of that, some amount of this other stuff that goes in a rack. So it's, it's not this, it's not on a pallet, it's not converged solution on a pallet, it's, converged, it's a converged solution with, with parts that you put together, but they all assemble into something that would fit on a pallet. And to me that's really intriguing, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit different approach. I think it, I, I like it. Uh, it gives, it, it presents a flexibility uh, that I think is, is unique. So that, I mean, that's the innovation here. But you asked the question, you know, what about other companies? I think the thing that's really interesting about being in a, a big company or a small company is sort of the pace of innovation and the craziness that, that happens. There's nothing that compares with being in a small company that is struggling for existence, you know, uh, and, and where everybody has to pull their weight or they're a, or they're a noticeable drag on the organization, right? right? And, so, and so you've got this, you know, you're, we're surviving by the skin of our teeth, and in a small company, everybody's aware of the financials of the company most of the time, yep. you know, and, and there's, that, there's that struggle to you know, to give birth to this technology, yeah. there's it's, nothing like that. Yeah, it, it, right. Yeah. I mean, the struggle. You know, when you have you know, you know, billions of dollars of budgets and hundreds of thousands of employees, that there's not necessarily the same hunger uh, that that you would have in a startup or the urgency. Uh, it, it's tough to do. And you know, listen to Prith talking about you know how you continue to innovate inside a big company. It can be done. Uh, they, 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 there's innovations like yes. store ones coming out of HP Labs and, and how all the pieces come together. The university research. So, um, you know. I, I think, as we said, there's innovations of all kind, not just the, the next cool new feature that some startup need, needs to go. Yeah, about. you know, at a, at a company like 3PAR or Equalogic, the innovation was about getting one thing done. You know, again, at HP, when, you know, when, the, when the group in Bristol, for instance, you know, invents store once, 
right? They, they're, they're working on this new technology. It came from outside of storage. They figured out that they could apply it to storage. Then they have to start integrating with everybody else, and it's a, diff, it's a different type of process. Uh, and uh, and I've, I've met some of the guys in Bristol, wonderful guys, uh, love them. I mean, okay. so, so, so talking about blurring the lines uh, between different uh, technologies, uh, if we look at social media and marketing, I think we've seen a, a, a real shift. Uh, you know, there's a big group of bloggers here at, at HP Discover. Uh, video is everywhere, multimedia. So, you know, where do you see things today, and what, what's going on for media and messaging and and, and and social? Well, it's crazy because traditional traditional public relations is, is is slowing down you can see it you you can see it having less impact all the time as consumers and the people within the industry you know reading a press release is less interesting today than it was two years ago it, right? it was interesting then it, well four years ago okay um, a lot of people do read press releases but they used to be the sort of thing that someone would rely on you know the announcement paper years ago and I worked for IBM is like this is this is the stuff right this is where you go as your source of information now people go to the internet right away right. and they want to see stuff on blogs they want to you know they uh, yeah the tweets are interesting but to get a larger amount of stuff where do you go to get that and and to have it validated by someone that's a third party for instance is really important so whatever a company produces anymore and I don't care if it's if it's HP or or IBM or EMC or network appliance or whatever anything that comes out of the company is suspected is just a piece of shill right and you know I'm a shiller I'm a shiller for HP now so anything that I write has you know anybody should look at it or anything that I produce should look at it and say okay this guy's an HP employee I mean, and they, and they do you know and 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 so they want to see the other people it's interesting, Nigel Poulton was saying yesterday, why does HP bring us here? Why do they even have us here? What's, you know, do people really pay attention to me? And the answer is, Nigel, yes they do. You know. Right, so, 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 so uh, this is Stu Miniman with Mark Farley. Mark, I have a final question for you, is uh, you know, multimedia, video, um, you know, how much do we need it and how much is, 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 is that a, a portion of communicating to people? Well, we've all got Sesame Street uh, mentalities and psychologies, right? So we need that infotainment. I think it's very important. You can communicate things so much faster in a piece of video. and It's something that's interesting. Otherwise, it's just whoosh. All right, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. We we'll always appreciate you know sharing with the communities and, and talking about new ways to reach information. Uh, appreciate you being one of our smart nodes coming on here to extract information and share it on theCUBE. Uh, it's been cool, Stu. Thanks. All right.